So yeah. God does not allow us to see these things for a reason. Because imagine if you were allowed to see these things, right? You would see your friends, your family, yeah, with spirits around them, and you would go crazy. No, no matter how much of a believer you are, you will go mad seeing this stuff. Which is why God hid this from us. We're not supposed to see it. Hey everybody, and welcome to the Raised and Redeemed podcast and YouTube channel. I'm your host, Michaela Nikolenko, and I started this show after finally finding my home in Christ. I grew up in a home with lots of abuse and addiction where Christianity became something that repelled me. I spent my early adulthood seeking God in other religions, tarot cards, psychedelics, and even myself. I didn't realize how much hell I had pulled up into my life until I came face to face with the dark side of the spirit world and Jesus fought hard to save me. Now I live to serve his will and host a platform where others can share their story too. If you're looking for a show that talks about real things and provides encouragement for those who have been to the dark side and back, this is the show for you. Make sure to rate, subscribe, and share this show with anyone that you feel might be encouraged by it too. Quick disclaimer, what we can agree on here is that we love Jesus and he is our Lord and Savior. I don't filter what my guests say, so there will most likely be something along the way that you don't agree with, and that's okay. I highly recommend spending time researching and praying about anything that gets said that might trouble you. With all that said, thank you so much for joining me, and welcome to the Raised and Redeemed family. What's up, everybody? Today, we'll be talking to Vitaly Podgorny, host of Alpha Talks about all things spiritual. Vitaly does a great job at tying physical world things to the deeper spiritual dimension and exposing wickedness in high places that leads to many of the world's issues with addiction, mental health issues, and so on. Today, we will be discussing some darker topics such as demons, addiction, and spiritual oppression. So A, please advise if you have children around, and B, keep in mind that the one who lives in you, aka Jesus Christ, is greater than the one who lives in this world. Without further ado, let's get on to the show. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Vitaly. Appreciate are, it. Yeah. So you are host of Alpha Talks, which is a YouTube channel where you're sort of exposing the darker realities of this world and of the spiritual world. Um, so I know that can freak a lot of people out. But going back to scripture, Ephesians 5.11, God says, take no part in the worthless deeds of darkness, instead expose them. So I think that's a lot of what you're doing. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the things you've seen, how you came to know Jesus as Lord, and how people can keep themselves protected from some of these darker entities. Yes. Yeah, so uh, again, thank you for letting me come on this channel. And I guess the way I got to know that Jesus is Lord is I grew up as an Orthodox Christian. A lot of you know people in the Slavic community grew up as Orthodox. Mm. So I knew Jesus. I knew who he was. I didn't, but I didn't really know him, know him until I started to figure out that like wicked spirits, demons, that kind of stuff is actually real. You know, it's not right. some Old Testament thing or a metaphor for human wickedness. It's actually real. Mm. And the reason I got into the type of content I make in terms of like exposing demons, I mean, some people see it as like a weird obsession. To me, I see it as like kind of exposing, you know, like because a lot of churches, they don't talk about this kind of stuff. It's very, I guess, taboo to almost talk about it. Kind of weird, right? It's like, oh, this is like an Old Testament kind of thing or it's a medieval fairy tale. It doesn't really happen today. Right. But I believe that a lot of things that what we call mental illnesses, nightmares, hallucinations is exactly what was happening during Old Testament times, right? demonic activity spirits and the way i got into this is i've had my own spiritual oppression with disassociations that i experienced in 2020 and it's kind of hard to really explain the feeling i guess i'll give like a brief definition kind of like when you're completely disassociated from your body right like you're not almost like you're in think think of your body like a car right you're in the passenger seat but you're not in the wheel like you see the mm. things going on around you, but you feel super disconnected from yourself and the things happening around you. Like you were spiritually hijacked. Yeah, kind of spiritually hijacked, not possessed necessarily, but like even just looking at my hands during dissociation, that felt kind of foreign. I'm just always like, what, the, you know, like almost tripping out without drugs, basically. Yeah. So it was did a very ever... trippy experience. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, did you ever get into drugs or anything like that? Or like what led to that dis dissociation? 
Um, it was mostly just a lot of stress about uh, basic like life stuff, as in like not feeling very accomplished. You know, yeah. as men, we like to feel accomplished. We like to feel like we're going somewhere, and when we don't feel like we're going somewhere, we tend to get very upset. Yeah, and then we tend to disassociate because of the you know the increase in stress when you have I a lot of stress. My, my husband could relate to that for sure. <laughs> Yeah, when you get a lot of stress, your body just kind of, kind of wants to disassociate because with the increase in stress, you get more sicknesses, you can't function properly. So your body just kind of like disassociates from everything from like reality. Yeah. Which I do believe is is spiritual oppression. But yeah. Yeah, well I think that's kind of the art of what you're doing is you're tying these these topics and these experiences that most of us are very familiar with, but you're tying in the spiritual component of that so people can see, you know, there's two, there's two sides of what's going on. And that's, that's in the Bible too, is like, there's this material physical world. And then there's also the spiritual reality behind that. And so I love that you're, you're tying those two together for people to, to sort of see that. So when you were going through this disassociation, um, and you started to realize, you know, like you're not in control, how did that lead up to you? developing a personal relationship with jesus um i remember i made a prayer one time because i really wanted this feeling to be over with i mean it's i think it's worse than depression yeah because like when you're disassociated you feel no emotion it's almost like a lack of it's very it's so confusing and almost um what's the word not psychedelic but uh abstract it's very abstract you don't know what's going on you feel and sometimes I'd get feelings of solipsism. I don't know if you know what that is Mm -mm. during this time. So solipsism is the feeling or the belief that you're the only thing that exists. Mm -hmm. And when you kind of like isolate yourself, right. Cause of disassociations, that's what it kind of feels like. You're like, you're the only thing that exists and everything else could just be like a hallucination or a memory. And it just gets really, yeah, it gets really, really trippy. And that's kind of like what spirits want. They always want people to isolate. They tell you to, you know, stay at home, stay in your room, don't go anywhere. Yeah. And they kind of drain you of, you know, just being around people during, during this like feeling is just very draining. Yeah. No, and I oh, yeah, back to, uh, for, I forget leading up to, so yeah, I made a prayer uh, during this time to, to God. And I said, show me the truth of what's really going on. And I promise no matter how crazy or ridiculous it's going to sound like, I'm going to follow through it. If you show me proof <laughs> and <laughs> he, he answered the prayer for oh, sure. So that's and, when he began to speak to you about the spiritual oppression. Yes, that that's when it went really crazy, like in terms of showing me proof. Okay, like so tell us. <laughs> so like that's kind of when I started my channel, it was supposed to be just like a regular podcast. Like if you looked at my first episode, it was just me and my brother talking about random stuff. There's nothing mm-hmm. specific. We talked about God. We talked about politics, just a bunch of, you know, basic podcast stuff. But then later on, after I made that prayer, I started getting into like spiritual topics and like the existence of spirits in another world. And I mean, it's even scientifically proven that another world does exist that our five senses can't see. Like, I don't know if you've ever seen the, uh, the color spectrum, like what our eyes can see. Oh, and how we only see like a smidgen of what's actually like 1%. So it's like, we can't see radio waves, microwaves. We can't see, you know, Bluetooth, um, gamma rays, but we can only see, a strip of color and wow. it's only three colors blue green and red and every other color is a mix of blue green or red or all together mm. and on top of that so that means 99 percent of reality we're blind to right we don't see wow. the energy and stuff happening and then on top of that we're also blind or deaf to 99 percent of reality more than 99 percent, because if you look at the spectrum of what we can hear the frequencies right we only hear from 20 to 20 000 i think it's called hertz or megahertz yeah anything Anything above 20,000, we can't hear, but dogs can pick it up, toddlers can hear it, and anything below 20, our ears can't pick up, meaning our world is incredibly colorful, incredibly noisy, and we can't hear or see most of it. So, right? so seeing is not believing because we cannot even experience 99% of reality. I We're love literally- that you said that for like the more logical minds that like they want like a scientific backing yes, to the spirit world. Yeah, so 99% of reality, we can't even experience. But yeah, after that prayer, I mean, God's been leading me down some interesting, weird paths and introducing me to people like that psychotherapist that I interviewed twice. That guy is the most, I've had the most fascinating conversation with him. And uh, he kind of backs up what the Bible says through like a physical perspective too, because he used to be 
a psychotherapist. He's retired now 40 years. And he didn't believe in all this demon entity stuff. But then he started having really bizarre experiences with his patients. Mm. And I asked him, like, when did it officially start to where your denial system dropped? Because he told me he kind of had some assumptions. It could be something more, but he was still kind of denying it. But he said one of his patients came in, I think this was 20, 30 years. It was a long time, maybe 90s or 80s. Came into his office without an appointment, sat down on his couch. And uh, the patient said, the voices want to speak with you. Right, the schizophrenic voices. So he deals with schizophrenic patients a lot okay. or people with other mental issues. And so the dude's voice changes slightly. And he says, you have no right to interfere with our way of life. So he said our, as in there is many things speak like wow. plural. Right? And then, <clears throat> so the psychotherapist is kind of like, what? And as the guy's kind of walking away, he turns around and he says, or the patient, he gets out of the office after saying that. He turns around and he says, you know what you're doing is dangerous, right? He's like, what? What? And he's super like confused. So that day he shut his office, he canceled all his appointments, and he was just looking out the window, like perplexed, like, what am I getting into right now? Is he a believer by chance? Yeah, he is. Um, another thing he told me that was interesting during our podcast is he said he used to work in a industrial prison complex, and prisons are filled with people with schizophrenia and all kinds of spiritual oppression, possession. Yeah. He told me that the voices will make people paranoid right especially in prison they say oh you better kill that guy before he kills you so yeah. they feed off this chaos and energy that's the whole point or that's the whole goal of these spirits is they tell people to do bad things to hurt yourself to hurt others because this creates an emotional storm you know mm -hmm. we have movies where right? i like um pennywise the clown or other horror movies where the entities would f feed off fear yeah right? or, yeah or the show uh twin peaks i don't know if you've ever seen twin peaks uh no i remember i remember you telling me a little bit about that um but i haven't watched it yet so yeah the show was made in the 90s incredibly accurate to how things work in reality it's a show about wicked spirits that live in another dimension and they possess and oppress people to cause them to do wicked things like rape and murder mm -hmm. and then feed off this negative emotional energy that's the whole premise of the show and it's I incredibly think, accurate. well it sounds interesting i definitely want to watch it but i think that answers a a question many of us would have and that's that's why, like, what is it that they have to gain um, in possessing? And, you know, so I feel like that sort of answers it is like, this is their, this is their fuel to continue right. to run rampant. Um, and I also feel like for me and my own experiences, like the more that you do these things that they tell you to do, it opens more portals for them to come in and more yes, and yes. more of them to come in. And then it just becomes more and more chaos, which, as you said, they they feed on. Because that's their end goal. I often um, I compare spirits to uh, a very famous villain, which is the Joker, you know, from the Batman series. Yeah. And the reason, and I always tell people that uh, that my I think the best villain to ever exist in terms of uh, you know movies and shows has to be the Joker because the Joker has no goal necessarily. Mm. It, he doesn't. He's not trying to get power. He's not trying to get money. He just wants pure chaos. I believe there's like a quote in The Dark Knight. And I think it was Alfred's uh, or uh, Batman's butler, Alfred. He said, some people just want to watch the world burn. They just want chaos. That's it. And it's literally these spirits. They know where they're going. Especially we know that because of the story of Legion, right? <clears throat> where they were um, begging Jesus to not send them to the pit. Mm -hmm. or whatever the pit is. So they, they knew their fate in the end, which means like they know where they're going. So all they're really doing is just feeding off chaos trying to take as many people down with them as possible because misery loves company. And that's why they're doing yeah. all this. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that's, that's another question I have, you know, you kind of just said it, misery loves company, but we're also leading up to like an Armageddon, like there's going to be a war. So I don't know if they're trying to get as many people on their team as possible. Like, I don't know if you, if you're able to comment on that, like, if they're trying to steal souls to be on their side of the war, because for some reason they believe, I don't know if they believe the lie that like they can win this thing, even though God says like, like we know it is finished and that God wins. Um, but I don't know if they're like trying, if they think that they have a chance by maybe getting more souls on their side. Oh no, they already know where they're going. Like I said, their only end goal is to cause more chaos and misery. Like they, they've, because I believe even in the, and I think it's Revelation that says the devil has but a short time and he knows this, which means that whatever they're doing, they're just kind of, 
essentially what they're doing is trying to be petty against God, right? Because they can't destroy God. They can't win in the end. And they know this. And if you read scripture all the way till the end, they know they can't win. They know their fate. Legion knew their fate, right? Because they begged Jesus, don't send us to the pit yet. It's not our time. And Jesus like, you're right. It's not your time yet. So they know where they're going. Their only goal is to kind of try to hurt God in a possible way, such as stealing as many souls from him as possible. Yeah, right. Stealing those who are made in his image. If you're in a relationship and trying to figure out if he's the one, or maybe you're recently single and taking a step back to figure out how to best go about finding the one, I have the ebook for you. Head over to the link in my bio or in the comment section from wherever you're listening to find my latest ebook, How to Know If He's the One. In this ebook, I share the worst of my relational mistakes and how Jesus finally showed me there was a better way. Gradually, he began to mend my heart, and I know he will do the same for you too. The psychotherapist said that parents who are schizophrenics, the voices often tell them to hurt their children, and they struggle with these thoughts of harming kids. And I asked him, why do you think that is? And he said, because children are closer to God. Wow. And humans are, made, humans are made in God's image and children are the purest form of that before we're corrupted, right? They're oh. loving, they're curious, they're literally God in the most purest form. So my dad is actually a paranoid bipolar schizophrenic and he was extremely abusive. He was a, he was a meth addict. Um, and so he, I watched him do the craziest things. He, he caused so much torment. Like my childhood, like was constantly a state of fear and survival um, and he was always hearing these voices running around the yard with a gun because he thought someone was watching them. And like I said, there was just so much abuse too. And for me though, like that just pushed me closer to God. Like I didn't really understand Jesus yet at that point, but it led me to praying a lot. Like I prayed a lot for God to get me out of there. Um, and eventually he did. It wasn't right away, but um, around age 12, you know, I finally got out. Um, but that's, I, I love hearing that answer because I do think, you know, people with schizophrenia, they're filled with all these demonic voices. And yeah, like that's why they, they hurt children. And he even hurt my animals. Like he threw my puppy off the porch once just to like hurt me. And so it's like animals and children are like the closest to God. So yeah, that makes sense to me having lived personally with a schizophrenic. Yeah. And that's the thing with the spirits. So. You know, drugs are the devil's devices, especially drugs like meth. And the psychotherapist told me a lot of his patients were meth addicts. And meth is one of the most powerfully destructive, you know, spiritual drugs. A common entity meth addicts would see is uh, the shadow people. Mm. And they get schizophrenia and stuff like that. And what's really interesting is what he told me is how meth addicts even get more meth, even when they don't have money or they're disoriented. Yeah. And he told me the, the voices tell them where to go. They tell them who to meet, what time to go, where where the person's going to be at. He told me a story that he worked with uh, one schizophrenic in one of the biggest prisons in America. I forgot the prison name. But he said his patient told him that when he, when he would rob houses, the voices would tell them who was asleep, what time they're asleep, if anybody's in the house, if you should rob the house or not, where the money is, yeah, where to go. Or like if you have drugs, the, the voices will tell you where to sell it me mm. at this corner this is where people come so it's literally spirits leading them to yeah. pass out these drugs to cause more harm to open more portals spiritual portals to get people possessed oppressed but yeah exactly. it's wild have you seen yeah. the movie donnie darko oh yeah I've, I've talked about it in a recent video okay yeah, yeah so my dad relates to that he actually has the rabbit tattooed on his arm um but yeah, so the rabbit, I feel like in this movie, it's been years since I watched it, but the rabbit is like the demonic figure, the demonic voice telling Donnie to do these things. And he doesn't even realize he's doing these things when he wakes up the next day. Um, but it was him all along. Um, and then there was something else. What was the, I'm trying to think of the first thing that you said, how the voices, oh, the shadow figures. Yeah. Okay. So growing up in this house with my dad, I saw super spooky things like starting as a as a child and that's kind of what developed my interest in these topics is because I'd seen so much firsthand um and I remember there were a couple of times there was this one shadow man specifically that was like super tall lengthy had like pointy limbs 
And I saw him like creeping around the yard before. And then another time I was in my bed and I was maybe in like kindergarten. Like I was like a little tiny kid. And I saw this thing slide under the one inch crack, like underneath my dad's door. And it was like a full blown, like it was standing there walking through the hallway and then it slithers completely under my dad's door. And I screamed and my dad came into my room and told me it was just a dream. And I'm like, no, like I could not sleep because I just had so much fear like growing up, you know. And so I knew I was not asleep when I saw this thing. Um, And so I know I was like spiritually sensitive to these things very early on and like just the demons all around because of what he was doing, the drugs, you know, the, the schizophrenia. Like I know I was seeing it firsthand what you're talking about like these shadow figures yeah speaking of the shadow figures about a month ago i actually had a dream with one of them and uh that made me realize another thing about you know spiritual gateways like yeah there's drugs there's trauma there's witchcraft but another spiritual gateway is not getting enough sleep so Mm -hmm. during this one week i wasn't getting enough sleep because of work i was waking up early i was coming home late because i was working all day with the clients so my sleep was very awful. So this one night, I think it was like a Saturday, this was about a month ago, beginning of December, I believe. I uh, go to sleep super exhausted. And you know, when you don't get enough sleep, you have all this, uh, it's called like REM sleep, right? Mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. it kind of hits you when you finally get enough rest. So your yeah. dreams are super vivid and weird and realistic. So I have this dream that when I go to sleep, I have this dream that I wake up in another room. It's like a bizarre, almost like a back room type of looking place. And there's like this weird candle. There's a table next to the bed and this weird candle on the table in the dream. Pick up the candle and there's this weird occult symbols on it. There's a bunch of weird esoteric symbols. I'm not even sure what they're saying. So I put it down and I go back into the bed to go back to sleep in the dream, basically. And the thing about dreams, our memories are cut off. Mm. right? So that's why we don't see it as weird. Because if we had our memories and we wake up in another place, we're like, what the heck? You know, where are we? Or where am I? Yeah. But your memories are cut off. So you don't see things as that weird. So as I lay down in the bed, I close my eyes. I hear this like buzzing sound. It was like electricity, like static. And it's getting closer and closer. And it's just like surrounding my body. And I can sense that something is over my face. But I don't mm-hmm. want to open my eyes. But I'm also curious. So I open my eyes. Mm-hmm. And I see this like shadow figure. Just this face up close and personal. And it's super dark. It's the darkest, blackest dark you can think of. Yeah. Like no light, nothing. And it's staring you in the face. And I'm like completely terrified. And the only thing I could think of doing is yell out to Jesus. And yes. so I was, was going to ask you what you did. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. That's, I've had that encounter a couple of times um, when, when I was disassociated. So the last time it happened, you know, a month ago recently, that, that was surprising to me. I'm like, the next day, I'm like, what did I do wrong? You know, did I mess with something? Mm. Did I, am I looking into these topics too much? And it's, you know, it's kind of going into my subconscious and yeah. maybe it's not spiritually good for me to look into this. But then I was thinking, I'm like, well, what what was so different about this week compared to last week? I mean, I've been doing these these kind of content and topics and reading about the stuff and looking into the, you know, the spiritual wickedness and how they work and making videos on it. And I'm like, the only thing that's different is I didn't get enough sleep. And then it, I remembered what the psychotherapist told me during the interview. And he said that schizophrenic voices don't want their patients falling asleep because when you're incredibly exhausted and tired, it does something to the spiritual energy field or with, you know, what the Bible calls the veil. And there's kind of like tears or something in it and spirits kind of get in and then they try to attack you and scare you. So not getting enough sleep is a gateway to believe it or not, as weird as it sounds. Well, that makes sense because people who are on meth, they don't sleep because no, they don't want them to sleep. They want you tired because it it, it destroys the spiritual energy field. God gave us rest for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just for our bodies, but also for for our spirit. And if we're not getting enough rest, it there's like a, I guess there's like a tear in the veil or something. And spirits are allowed to come in, right? We have this force field around us, which is why we can't see entities unless we mess with the devil's devices and then get into that territory. So yeah. God does not allow us to see these things for a reason. Because imagine if you were allowed to see these things, right? You would see your friends, your family yeah, with spirits around them. And you would go crazy. No, no matter how much of a believer you are, you will go mad seeing this stuff, which is why God hid this from us. We're not supposed to see it. Because he wants because us to have his peace. Yeah, because it's terrifying because the world is not perfect. There's not a new heaven, new earth. There are, there's still spirits roaming. The one thing I find weird is when Christians say that not everything is spiritual, right? There's secular things. I'm like, every single thing is spiritual. Going to the mall with your friends is spiritual. You're a soul interacting with another soul, not to mention the spirits that are possibly influencing these other souls. 
So everything is spiritual. Going, kind of going to get some fast food with friends is spiritual, believe it or not. Yeah, nothing there's, exactly. There's nothing that, that God's not in. Um, I heard a quote once. It was like, okay, so if, if anything matters, then everything has to matter. Like yes, if any exactly. of it matters, all of it matters. Everything you do absolutely matters. And a lot of people mess with spiritual gateways. There's this belief that Christians have that because I believe in Jesus and I have Christian on my forehead, uh, I can't be spiritually oppressed or possibly even possessed. I'm like, yeah, you can if you mess with the devil's devices. Absolutely. Yes. I just, believing in Jesus. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I just had my last guest. We were talking about this, how Christians can still be oppressed by demons and still need deliverance even if you're saved even if you know you're a part of the family of god like you can still have demons and need deliverance from that and deliverance can be very simple it's not like you know how some videos portray like some of these weird churches they kind of make it look like the body's all shaking and convulsing and Mm -hmm. doing all this crazy stuff but deliverance can be very simple as number one you realizing that you're spiritually oppressed because that's the first step you are 90% on the way to victory if you can yeah. admit that you're oppressed because many Christians don't want to admit it. Yeah, that's right? tough. <laughs> like, I have a friend who took, he smoked a wax pen uh, for the first time. He's never done weed or anything like that uh, during the summer when he went camping with friends. And I warned him, I said, hey, you're going to experience something weird. You know, I was like, be careful because I know you're an overthinker and you might experience, you know, some negative side effects from smoking a wax pen because it's very powerful. It's like a, I think it's like 80% THC or something. Mm-hmm. And these pens are made in China. So you know, you don't know the other ingredients that are possibly in it. So long story short, he takes it and he starts going through disassociation. He told me he saw this weird, like ghost-like figure with no legs, but arms, I guess, kind of like a Casper figure jump into the fire or the bonfire that they were sitting. I'm looking at. And ever since then, I remember he was telling me, dude, I'm getting like weird hallucinations. Sometimes I have split second hallucinations of seeing like an alien. And then he told me um, he would get the sensation that something is, he, he sometimes would get panic attacks mm-hmm. and the sensation that there's like a venomous big old bug on top of him. Mm. And that he has, to, he has this feeling of impending doom that he has to run because there's something on top of him about to attack. Yeah. And he still won't admit that he's being spiritually oppressed. I don't know how, what his belief is now. Cause I always check up on him and I'm like, how are you doing? And he says, it's kind of like a roller coaster. My anxiety is like this. I feel great. And then he goes down. I feel great. But before it was really mm-hmm. bad. And I was telling him, what do you think this is? And he's like, oh, I think this is just mental. You know, and even though he's Christian, he does believe in spiritual stuff and demons and stuff like that. But some for some Christians, it's very difficult to admit that, you know, you messed up, you messed with something and open yourself up. They don't want to say, oh, I don't have, you know, I'm not spiritually oppressed. I'm like, look, that's the first step. You want to overcome this, you just got to admit it. Yeah, because exactly. if it's a spiritual problem, you need a spiritual solution. If it's physical, then you need a physical solution, right? But you've tried the physical solutions. You went to therapy for a session and it didn't help. You took mm-hmm. medication. It didn't help. It's all temporary. So until you, I told him, until you admit it, I know I'm like, I understand it's hard and it's creepy to mm-hmm. admit it. But until you do, like, you're, you're not going to be healed, man. Like, you, you need to admit that this is a spiritual mm-hmm. issue. Because once you admit it, then you can ask Jesus for help. Because it's only through his name that these demons are cast out. Wow. I'm not, and I told him, like, I'm, I'm, you're not possessed, but you're, like, oppressed by these things. They're constantly yeah. bothering you. They're not letting you sleep. You're waking up in the middle of the night. They're giving you nightmares. You feel like he told me he had sleep paralysis like four times in a week. You know, that's a lot. That's not normal. Yeah. And I'm like, if people need, if you're going through something like that, first step, you're 80%, 80 to 90% of the way to victory. Just admit it, right? Finally admit that you're going through spiritual oppression. Second step, call to the name of Jesus to be saved. That's what it says. Third step, get rid of any, any um, spiritual gateways. Get rid of the drugs. Get rid of the bad people you're hanging out with. Get rid of what a witchcraft, whatever you're messing with. That, that's yeah. opening yourself up to this, right? Get rid of the fear too, because in the Bible, uh, the most repeated command of Scripture is "Do not fear." Three hundred and or like five hundred times it's repeated in the Bible, because fear is a is a form of reverence. It's a form of worship. Mm. So when we fear spirits and we get scared of seeing like the hallucinations and stuff like that, that kind of gives them more power over us. Think of it like yeah. hypnosis. You know, you know, do you know how hypnosis works? Not exactly, no. So if I was a skilled hypnotist, I can't just come up to you on the street and wave my little clock or whatever and say something to you and then you'll be hypnotized. It only works with your participation and attention. Mm. That's the only way it works. Same with spiritual oppression and possession. It only works with your participation. You giving into fear, that's your participation. 
you paying attention to it, that's your participation. That's oh, and the final thing, oh, sorry, not the final thing, but one thing I wanted to mention before I forget is, so schizophrenics hear these voices. And what the psychotherapist told me is these spirits don't just hit the schizophrenics. They hit everyday people like you and I, but they're called intrusive thoughts, thoughts that tell you to do something mm-hmm. destructive. You ever had a destructive thought, super random? Like oh, stab yeah. Your, stab your husband, right? Or something stupid like that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's not extreme, but I know what you're talking about. <laughs> but it, it does get to that extreme. Some people have told me like it, it gets to that extreme where they're cutting vegetables and, and a random quiet thought tells them stab your hand. Right. right? Or like or stab your sibling or something. And you're like, whoa, you know, you dropped the knife. You're like, what was that? Yeah. Or like you're hiking near a cliff or something. And a voice tells you, why don't you just jump? Right. You're yeah. driving a car and a, and a thought just tells you, what if you just, you know. Yeah. yeah what would that be? Yeah. yeah. So he says like. When it comes to schizophrenics, they don't have to work as hard in terms of making them do destructive things. Mm. When it comes to normal, everyday people who are non-neurodivergent, like you and I, they have to work a little. So they quietly put these thoughts into our head. And the way they get into our head is when we have you know, times of stress or distress, depression. Uh, they kind of, it's kind of like a, they smell it. It's, what's the description? I think the uh, psychotherapist told me it's like a shark smelling blood in the ocean, mm. right? When we give into negative emotion, that releases this like energy signature, yeah. and the spirits sense it and they move in on people, and that's when the intrusive thoughts start. That's when you know the bad destructive thoughts start to begin. I and love that analogy of like the shark yeah. smelling blood in the water because it's like they can tell when our defenses are down, when we're spiritually, emotionally, mentally weak. They know our our barriers are down, so that's why we do have to stay like guarded we have to be taking care of ourselves every day staying in the word understanding that the word is our sword it's how we fight by knowing god's truth because like you said about the fear it's like when we engage when we participate in that fear it's like us letting them know like our faith is not in god you know if our faith was in god we wouldn't be afraid right now because we know that i wrote down a couple of verses here one john four four the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world, Jesus. And mm-hmm. then James 4, 7, submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. So when you know, yeah. like when you know these verses and what God says, you know, you don't have to be afraid of these spirits. They don't have anything on you. Especially if you don't mess with their devices, you're not getting into their territory. You're not giving into the fear. Yeah. Then yeah, you're safe. You won't get intrusive thoughts. But that's when the intrusive thoughts start is during times of emotional distress. And the Bible even calls like the word depression is used in the Bible, but not that word specifically. It's called the spirit of heaviness. Mm. So it's not an emotion. It's a spirit. It's not like OCD, anxiety. That's not an emotion. It's a spirit. The Bible also has another word called the spirit of fear. Like Mm -hmm. real, these are real spirits. Like some pastors, when they talk about these verses, they're like, oh, it's like a metaphor for having the spirit of fear the emotion of fear the emotion of feeling heavy i'm like no it's the spirit of fear spirit of heaven it's a real spirit scripture says (laughs) yeah exactly i mean it's very plain and simple if a child reads it like yeah it's a spirit right to to adults it's often hard to just admit that like hey this is a real spirit this is not just emotion yeah our world is super naturalistic now and nothing is spiritual or only half the things are spiritual according to a lot of worldly christians right it's only half spiritual half physical i'm like no it's it's everything like it's 100 percent spiritual we have a foot in both worlds as humans, yeah like, always and i think that scares us because it makes us realize like how little control we really have and it makes me think of um a bible verse I, I don't remember exactly where it is but when these guys were trying to oh they were disciples of jesus and they were trying to cast out demons and these demons wouldn't flee and jesus was like this kind can only be cast out prayer in and prayer. Fasting. yeah yeah and exactly fasting. And fasting, okay. I'm going to take a quick second here to tell you about Raised and Redeemed merch. I somehow end up in my bright pink Raised and Redeemed crew neck nearly every day because it's so comfy and I love to tell the world that I have been raised and redeemed in Jesus' name. And wearing something that says that is a great conversation starter. Not only do we have crewnecks, but we also have t-shirts, hoodies, cropped hoodies, mugs, stickers, socks, and more. You can either follow the link titled Raised and Redeemed Merch in the comment section of wherever you're listening, click the link in any of my social media bios, 
or go to raisedandredeemed.creator/spring.com and that is raised and spelled out a n d redeemed.creator/spring.com to order yours and support the show today. So, we've talked about the reality of the spiritual world. Uh, we've talked about some of the ways that people open portals to these darker entities. Um, and then we were just talking about how people can protect themselves or like essentially fight against these spiritual entities with like the name of Jesus, with knowing the word of God, because that's our sword. Um, and then we were just talking a little bit about prayer and fasting. So I don't know, would you mind going into that a little bit more? Yeah. So in that part of scripture, the disciples are trying to cast out a spirit, but it's not working. You know, and Jesus says, oh, this kind only goes out through prayer and fasting, meaning this is a very powerful demon because th- there is a hierarchy. I made a video on this, actually, the hierarchy of spirits. Mm-hmm. There is, they have masters, like there's low level demons and there's mm-hmm. higher level. And it's even, it even says this in the Bible, we'll call it principalities, right? Spiritual wickedness in high places. A principality is a place where there's a prince, there's rulers. Yeah. And I believe. I believe they call this prince throughout scripture a couple of times, Beelzebub. Mm-hmm. So there's like, there's like levels to this thing. And so when the demon's very powerful, the only way you can get rid of him is through prayer and fasting. Okay. Because when we fast, we get closer to God, right? We have no food in our system. Yeah. And it's just very, I don't know if you've ever done a fast before for like a, a decent time period, like more than a day, but you do feel like, I don't know how to explain it, like more spiritually connected to God. Yeah, I struggle a lot with with fasting. Like, it's I, hard. Food is good. <laughs> yeah, it's so tough. You know, and then it's like you don't want to make promise you can't keep. So when you decide on a fast, it's like, how can I do this and get closer to God, but also not over promise and under deliver. So right now, my church is doing the twenty one days of prayer and fasting, and I'm like, what am I gonna do? So I've and this sounds silly, but, um, so something that I'm just doing right now is not having any solid food until afternoon every day. Mm -hmm. So maybe having a smoothie or a juice. Um, and then also like what I consume TV wise, like that's a big thing is cause you know, I'll be working on stuff and then have like a show on in the background. And sometimes it's like this worldly show, like Ginny and Georgia or something like this. And Gilmore girls. Well, yeah, that one I feel like is it's not okay, but yeah so i'm just trying to be really watchful about those things so before i got married i was at a different place and what i was able to do like spiritually and with fasting because it's just me i'm the only one in my space but then you get married and you kind of you mash together like play-doh and then you rebuild so now it's like rebuilding that that spiritual life and so now my fasting looks a little different than maybe it did like before I got married, I was able to do a three day fast. Mm. And I woke up at like three in the morning on the third night with my stomach like eating itself. And I finally ate like an orange or something like that. But, but now it's like being married brings out, it's a whole new spiritual challenge. So finding things we can agree on and like do together. So now that's doing the whole smoothie thing. And yeah, what I consume and I am feeling like, I feel like when your heart is in it, and like you are doing it because you want to get closer to God, like he's gonna, he's gonna work even if we fail, even if we're imperfect, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, no, fasting is also just <clears throat> it's physically good for you. It gives you like a detox for your whole body, like a restart to your system. It also makes you appreciate food more. And wow. when Jesus went to the desert, you know, for 40 days, he fasted, he didn't eat nothing. And I believe mm-hmm. the devil's trying to taunt, taunt him and tempt him. He's like, why don't you just turn this rock into bread? You know, if you're the son of God. Yeah. And Jesus would always um, reply to the devil with scripture all the time. You know, he's like, get thee behind me, Satan, as it is written, you will worship the Lord your God. So some demons, powerful spirits like the devil himself only comes out through prayer and through fasting. Because when we fast, we're kind of in our weakest state. We have no food. We're tired. Our energy is down. The only thing we can rely on is like spiritual sustenance from God. That's it. God. God alone. Keep us going. Right. But when we have food, when we have all these comforts around us, it's really easy to, I guess, not be as spiritually sound, right? When we have all these comforts, yeah. all this food, TV. Yeah, that's so good. We're so spoiled. Having, 
yeah, we are spoiled. Like sometimes having our own wilderness to go into kind of like reminds us that like, like we really do need God and these comforts are not always here to stay. Like this can disappear in a day. And what happens when a lot of these comforts do disappear? A lot of people's faith is going to disappear. Yeah. Because they, they're, they've been taught. I'm like, oh, I thought God promised me a good life. I thought this is, is going to be easy, right? I'm going to be happy. I'm like, not really what he promised. He promised you joy right at the end of all this, but he didn't promise you easy, happy life. Yeah. He that. says there will be hardship. He says we're going to yeah. struggle. But in that, we still have his joy and his peace. We, we are the most, in the West, we're the most spoiled Christians ever. I mean, you look at Christians in like the Middle East, and Africa, and like Eastern Europe, they're very dedicated, like Orthodox Christians. They'll go to their church all the time. They'll pray. They'll read their Bibles. Christians today are very lazy. Right? Yeah. They'll go to church. They'll do their little worship song, and they'll hear a motivational speech, and they feel good about it. And they're like, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Or did you feel an emotional reaction to the music and the motivational speech? Yeah, right. it's Isn't called the, the lukewarm spirit? Christians. Yeah, that's another thing. A lot of people confuse the Holy Spirit with like a super emotional reaction, right? I'm like, you can get the same reaction as you do hearing worship music and a motivational speech from a preacher at a concert, right? You can cry, you can feel the sense of love. And I'm like, so how do you decipher that? Yeah, like, that's, that's good. It says so in the Bible, it says this, uh, the fruits of the Spirit, right? Joy, love, peace, understanding, wisdom. So sometimes getting the Holy Spirit can be as simple as just an understanding, right? Like, yeah. like your mind has been open. You're like, oh, wow, this is what this means, right? Yeah. And that's another thing is people believe that when you get the Holy Spirit, information is just downloaded into you like a flash drive. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say that. It says the spirit of truth will lead you to truth, not give you the truth. Mm. It's going to lead you to places and show you things. But it's not going to download into your mind. And that's why the Bible says study to show yourself approved. You need to do things, right? You're, you can't just sit there and like, oh, the Holy Spirit is giving me information. I'm like, no, yeah. you need to do things. You need to study and the spirit will lead you. It's not in, it's not like you're a robot and information is downloaded. You have to do things. Exactly. Right? But people are like, oh, no, that's, that's works. I'm like, no, it's not. It says so in the Bible. It's a command. They're like, yeah, sure, it's works. But it's not like, it's not for salvation reasons. It's to build a better relationship. Yes, yeah, like works are for us. You know, it's it's exactly. not like what gets our salvation. Like our salvation is from, you know, believing Jesus is Lord and died for yeah. our sins. But the works are for us. Like they're still important, but it's just to help our own spiritual life, not, they, they, not for our salvation. They, they prove our faith to ourselves and to others too. So when others look at you, they're like, you know, why is he so, they, they can see your faith physically, right? Not just like an invisible faith. Like, oh yeah, I believe, like, like I believe my car can take me from point A to point Z. Mm -hmm. If I never drive it, I'd, how are people going to know that I believe my car can take me? So what kind of church do you go to an Orthodox church? So I used to with my family, like there's a lot of things I don't agree with Orthodox, I, but I love what I really love about Orthodox people is especially the men. They're very masculine and stoic. Mm. They're not like tip, like a lot of Christian men today can be very feminine. Yeah. Even And I know some people might think I'm being judgmental, but even the way some people dress and act, they don't, they're not, they don't remind me of the masculine disciples in the Bible, right? The spiritually yeah. masculine, strong. They're very like feminine. They're very. I know I what you know. mean. Know you know what I mean, though, right? They're, they're not as masculine. Like, when you think of the disciples, you're not going to think of a lot of the modern so-called youth today. Not everybody, but a, a lot of the people there. Well, that's so, why a lot of Christian women struggle with dating and looking for their husband yeah. at the church, because a lot of the guys in the church are kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of feminine. They're not really, like, attracted to that. And they want somebody, like, you know, from the Bible, like disciples who are yeah. you know, willing, willing to die for their faith or go through some struggles or hardships. A lot of Christians today, like they, they don't even like going through people, people telling them mean things about their faith. Yeah. Right? Or if they see something in the Bible that other believers might disagree with, they keep it to themselves because they're scared of being made fun of or, you know, and there's always situations like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's debates or, uh, on how God created the world. Exactly. Yeah. If you read through that, if you read through Genesis, like a lot of people don't really read Genesis and they don't think it's important, but it's the first page and I do. Yeah, I uh, it talks about how God made the earth, right? What did He do first? First, there was water, and then in the water, you put a firmament, and then land, and then the waters were divided from the waters below. The waters below became the oceans. Mm -hmm. And if you understand how God made the earth, you'll understand the rest of the Bible. For example, mm -hmm. how did Noah's flood happen, right? What are we told in church? What happened? It, it rained or something, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of what we're told. Yeah, well, rain is recycled water. It just scientifically, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. 
So what the Bible says is the windows of heaven opened up of this firmament that's under the waters and it let the waters in of what's on the outside. I don't know if you've ever looked into biblical cosmology. This might be kind of new to you. It is new to me. Yeah. Definitely look into biblical cosmology. Just look into what the Hebrews believed about the world. Because, yeah, I'm not going to get too much into it because it's going to be totally sidetracked. But yeah, just for yourself, look into it. It's very interesting. It will okay. give you a new understanding on how um, the Bible works, how yeah. things happen. I but like yeah, you brought that up, like how, you know, like many Christians have differing beliefs about different things in the Bible. And that should be something like we're okay talking about without like mm-hmm. demonizing the other person. Yeah. It's it's something I've been humbled a lot with lately. Like I even added a disclaimer to the intro of my podcast of being like, listen, like the main thing we can agree on is the fact that we love Jesus. A lot of the other things like we might have differing beliefs on and that's okay. Like do your own you research. Yeah. yeah. Pray about it. Like seek your answers. Um, and so I, I feel like I've become so much more open-minded through Same. the through the Holy Spirit, like convicting me, literally sitting me down to where like, I don't care if you're a Catholic, Orthodox, this denomination, that denomination, like if you love Jesus and we're like seeking the truth, like, okay, you know, that's fine. Yeah, We could talk about the differences and what you believe because in the Bible, it says, if you answer a matter before you hear it, you're foolish and it's shameful. So what that means is if another Christian tells you something that you disagree with, like me telling someone else, about biblical cosmology and like, oh, there's no way God made the world. You know, the world, space, expanse, whatever. And they don't agree with you. And they just say, oh, your ideas are stupid. They're uh, Then they, they just disobey the biblical command of not answering mm-hmm. matters before they hear it, right? They'll hear the first sentence of what you're saying. And then it just goes through the one ear and out the other. And it kind of reminds me of the analogy of tape over the glasses. No matter how genuine some believers think they are in terms of seeking the truth, if they have a pair of sunglasses on with tape over, that's all they're going to see. Mm. All right, so until they take it off, then they'll be able to see the truth and experience it. And yeah. I guess look into it because even the Bible says to become like a child, right? Yeah. Which is a clean, what is a child? A clean slate. There's yeah, no preconceived okay. ideas, right? Nothing. They're, they are completely clean, ready to learn. There's even a scientific fact. They did a study and it showed that children learn faster than adults because they're clean slates. They have yeah. no ideas. They have no biases. They're not scared to look into things. They're curious. Most adults and most Christian adults are not like that. Yeah. They're not like, they're not like children. They don't have that curiosity. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is is fear because it messes with your uh, world view and which messes with your stability and your identity and uh exactly. you know and it yeah, takes like, back to like you being solely dependent on God. Like that's that's fine if I don't know anything besides for the fact that he is good and his word is true. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah. You you have to become like a child because there's like 40,000 denominations, right? Isn't that crazy? Not four, not 40. There's 40,000. Yeah. Right? There's Baptists, Jehovah's Witnesses, Pentecostals, Orthodox, Amish. You have so many thousands and thousands, which is nuts, which goes to show that you need to become like a child and really read the scriptures for yourself. That's my only advice to people. Read it as if you've never read it before. Start from the first page. Mm. It's literally the beginning. Most Christians don't even know much about the first page. Most Christians don't even know what the word sin is. They're like, oh, what is the definition of a sin? And they're like, oh, sin is when you do something bad or against God. I'm like, no, what the New Testament gives the definition. And it's uh, sin. uh, I think it's John. Man, I know it's in John. And it says sin is is the transgression of the law. Mm. That's the definition of sin. Transgression of law. What law? The law that God gave us, right? The commandments. What he said to do, not to do, to eat, not to eat. And it's all for our own good. And it's very practical. Like even a lot of Old Testament commands, like the diet laws, you know, a little bit about that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Like not eating pork and shellfish and stuff like that. Even those least commandments, what the Bible calls is still matters today in a a physical sense. Because if you think about it, all those unclean animals, they're bottom feeders. They're not good for us. Even science has figured that out. Right. God said it first, but science figured it out later. Yes. Right. Yeah. Kids are bottom fingers. Uh, shellfish, what do they do? They're, they're the filters of the ocean. They eat poop and all this mm-hmm. garbage, and then we eat it. And then the Bible also says, don't eat fish without scales. Well, what are fish without scales typically? Bottom feeders, right? They eat garbage and poop and all this stuff that's not good for you. Yeah. So God loves you so much, he even gave you a perfect diet, and Jesus followed this diet, right? He said, eat clean animals like beef who eat fruits and vegetables, right? Like lamb and and bulls, pigs, or not pigs, um, Beef, you know, clean animals like that, salmon yeah. with scales. So he gives us kind of like a rule of thumb. Here's what you can eat. 
for your own physical health. A lot of Christians are like, oh, none of that stuff matters anymore. Yeah. I'm like, even though it's the least commandment, it's still a commandment, right? And it's for your own good. It's because God loves you so yeah. much that he even gave you a diet to follow. And you know, Jesus and did like free us from the law to where we're not judged necessarily. We're not judged according to the law when we're in Christ. But like you said, it's still important and can still be helpful for us to Just, know. Yeah, because yeah, when Christians say that the law doesn't matter, like nothing matters about it anymore. You're missing a crucial opportunity to show non-believers just how practical they can be. Like I just told you, the dialogue, right? Mm-hmm. They're all bottom feeders, all the unclean animals, pigs, rats, bats, vultures. They're all bottom feeders and they're not good for us. And we know through science that bottom feeders are not good for us. Yeah. Right? I love that statement that you made about how science is just now figuring out what God already told us years ago. I just, I said that to a, a psychologist the other day because we were talking about, you know, psychology things and studies of the brain and how the mind works and stuff like this. And I'm like, it's just so interesting how far science is behind the word of God. Like at one point people believed uh, the earth was flat, but the Bible said the earth was round. And then science years later now realizes, okay, the earth is round. Oh, There's- just wait till you get into biblical cosmology. It's even crazier than flat around. Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> just wait. I'll tell you that much. Look at it through a clean slate perspective and it's going to, it's going to open up some doors for you. I'll tell you that yeah. much. It well, blew my so, mind. Yeah. Well, uh, this goes back to, you know, when people ask Jesus, what's the most important commandment? He says, love, love the Lord, your God, um, and then love other people. Um, so like love God and love, love others. And, and I feel are, like, no, I was going to say, and how do we love God? Cause sometimes we have our own definition, right? Or play worship music for him or go to Bible study. But the Bible gives us the definition of, uh, how you love him and it says if you love me do my commandments obey. keep my commandments yeah obey my mm-hmm. commandments that's how we show love not through any other means i mean sure like it is also showing love by you know singing and worship to him and praying and go to bible studies and talking about him because whenever you talk about him there he is in the midst of you know of you two yeah. or more people um and but that he said shows- if you love me do my commandments right yeah because that shows you you trust him and you trust mm-hmm. that he is good well this has been good there's definitely so much to unpack. And like I, I tell the listeners now in my intro, you know, anything that you might still be curious about or aren't sure that we said about do your own research and and pray about it. Um, And then just one last thing, Vitaly, would you mind praying for the listeners? Maybe, maybe like in regards to, you know, the the things you used to struggle with before um, really developing your relationship with Christ uh, Mm -hmm. with, with those things in mind as well. All right. God, thank you so much for this opportunity and this blessing. I appreciate that you let us all live to this day. Um, Thank you for everything. Guide us into all truth and protect us from wicked spirits. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And how can people find you? Uh, My channel, Alpha Talks with a Z at the end, Talks. And uh, I also have an Instagram, same name. I I make posts almost every day Mm -hmm. about different topics like dialogue or why god says fearing the lord is wisdom you know like topics like that yeah but yeah you can find me on there same awesome okay well thank you you so much yeah it was cool talking to you you as well bye that's all i have for you today thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed this show i'd love to have you leave a review share it with a friend and even connect with me on other platforms it's at michaela nicolenko on instagram and tiktok And we also have an at Raised and Redeemed Instagram account too. I look forward to connecting with you there. Until next time, stay well and God bless you.